This video is about creating an automatic table of contents. This is the other beauty of having documents using Word styles because styles can be used to add things automatically and save yourself a lot of time. If we go in front of heading one, all I'm going to do is just insert a page break there. And if we go in here, insert page break, and what it'll do, it'll drop it down to the second page. And we'll go place cursor in the top. And now what we want to do is we want to actually insert some form of table of contents. If we go to the references tab and we go to the table of contents, click on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do insert table of contents. And it's going to ask me what styles I want to use for my table of contents. And you can see it's automatically picking up heading one, heading two, heading three. But just to check, if we click on options, we can see that heading one, heading two, and heading three are going to be put in at a style level or a table of contents level, top level, of one, two, and three. So we'll click OK, and we'll click OK. And then what it's done is it's put in, there we can see our table of contents, heading one, heading two, heading three. Now, we may want to change the way that looks, and it is generally a good idea to do so. If we go back here and we go and have a look at our styles, and run down the bottom, you'll see that you've got top one, top two, top three. If we select top one for the moment, so I'm going to modify that style, and I'm going to again make it Times New Roman, because that's the university standard, and we'll make it 12. And I'm going to go into the formatting here, and I'm going to go into the font, and when I go into the font, I'm going to make it all caps. And we'll leave it, and we'll make it, uh, rather than regular, we'll make it bold. And I'll click OK. And now you'll see that it's picked up those heading one styles and made them bold. Let's pick up top two. And we'll pick up top two, and we'll do a little bit of modifying in here as well. Again, we'll pick Times New Roman. And we'll leave it at size 11. We'll go to the uh, uh, font again. And this time we can make it small caps and we'll click again and we can go in and we can see that they've been made small caps we might be then to take heading 3 modify and sometimes it's quite a good idea to have it in italics size 10 and again times new roman we'll click ok and that's what it's done it's put it into italics and there we can see we have a table of contents automatically put in now if we go down to our Documents. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put another heading one into here. So there's another heading one that's gone into that section. And again, I apply the style to it to make sure we pick up the heading one style. So we'll go up the top here to the styles, make sure it's a heading one. Notice how as soon as I entered that, everything renumbered. That one there was number two, but it's now gone to number three. And all the subheadings have renumbered automatically for us. We don't need to worry anymore about looking at numbers. If we go back up to our table of contents, clearly that table of contents is wrong because we've got a 1, 2 and now we've got a 3 and this one here will be 3.1, 3.2 and so on. If we just click over here, right click over here and do update field and do update entire table, it's gone and it's put that section in for us and it's renumbered these and also you'll notice it's changing the page numbers so if the thing moves over to the next page it will automatically ch change the page number for us. So that's how to use styles as far as inserting a table of contents is concerned.